The ailerons are a fairly easy build process here. So as you can see, I've got everything unwrapped, deburred, and uh, thoroughly cleaned. Um, so basically, we're going to start by assembling a couple of the ribs, and then we're going to pretty much just throw it all together. So uh, here's what that process looks like. So here are the ribs prepped for the aileron here. Uh, rib two is fairly straightforward. Just use 4.8 by 10 millimeter rivets to uh, secure this hinge bracket in place. Um, rib three here, uh, I find it's best to slide your AN416 bolt through the hole first, um, <clears throat> and then use two Clecos and just match drill and rivet, match drill and rivet, match drill and rivet, because the plate may not line up exactly perfectly with the two holes, and uh, that would require you know clear drilling it with a quarter inch drill bit. Uh, which is of course an option, but uh, just doing it this way, make sure everything lines up uh, dead on with the hole ahead of time. So uh, either way, basically you want a nice tight fit here so that there's no slop in that bolt and uh, you should be good to go. And then with rib seven, um, it says 3.2 by eight millimeter rivets, but these holes, as well as the holes on your nut plate here, are actually going to fit the 2.4 millimeter rivet. So be careful when you're countersinking this. There's not a whole lot of thickness to this material. Uh, so it's, it's very easy to overdo. And actually, as you can see here, the part that rests against this rib um, won't actually interfere with the rivet head anyway. So even if you were to just very little countersink that and have this protrude slightly, you're not going to have any interference or any issue. So uh, with countersinking these holes, be very careful not to overdo it. But, um, and so yeah, so we're ready to uh, start assembling here. So when you assemble your ribs uh, two and three together here, uh, make sure that you orient your rod end with the grease fitting facing up. It'll be a lot easier to grease it in the future for any maintenance um, because the opening of the skin is up here. And so that just ensures you're able to access it down the line. And also at this stage, before we've had it uh, installed it into the skin, uh, you see I leave the bolt just slightly loose so that we can fit and make sure that everything uh, aligns properly. And then once we get one part of the skin installed and clicoed in place, then we can reach in and, and uh, tighten that bolt the rest of the way down. So now I've got all the ribs clicoed into position um, from the underside. So the easiest way to do this is leaving off your counterweight balance tube on the front here. Uh, you're able to install these ribs much easier. Um, working with the aileron upside down, start by clecoing in everything from the underside. Um, leave off the front row of clecos along the whole thing so that that way, when it comes time to slide the balance tube in, there's a little bit of play just to get it to slide through nice and easily. Um, also, now with the ribs two and three clecoed so that we know they're lined well with the skin and everything is uh, nice and straight with those, we can tighten that bolt the rest of the way down. So the other step here is, of course, leave off rib one so you have a nice opening here uh, to slide that uh, counterbalance tube through. So we'll do that now. So now with everything clecoed into position, um, we are not going to be riveting at this point <clears throat> the uh, the overlapping skins and also the first two holes past that. So the first three holes on each one of the ribs, we're going to leave unriveted uh, for now. And that's because what we're going to do is after this whole airline's uh, completed, riveted, except for those row, we're going to install it next to the flap on the wing and get the twist exactly right. So it's a perfect straight edge on the trailing edge um, the whole way across the wing. So anyway, now we're gonna go ahead and rivet this assembly together. All right, so now that we've got the uh, skins riveted nicely into position, um, of course, without the front row of rivets here, um, I like to install the Clecos, as you saw earlier on, along this front overlapping skin. It just makes sure that uh, there's not a whole lot of twist in the assembly. Um, Ultimately, we are going to have just a slight amount of twist that we install into it, and then we'll have to match drill these holes. But I'll show that in another video for the final assembly, the final finishing of the aileron and the flap. So for now, the last remaining step is to install our hinge bracket onto the end of the aileron here, and then we're done with this process for now. Okay, so now the aileron is complete, and uh, 
we can go ahead and set this aside for now until we uh, fit it up and get the final twist done. So here's the bracket on the end here. And uh, yeah, it's a very nice straightforward part and it comes out looking great.